Anime Apocalypse 2016 begins my 2016 convention adventures. I heard of this convention very recently last fall. The only thing I knew about this con before attending was that it last took place in Rockford, Illinois back in December 2014. So what are my final thoughts on this convention? I'm Justin Panetta, and this is my review for Anime Apocalypse 2016. Anime Apocalypse 2016 is a small size convention located at the Hyatt Regency Schaumburg in Schaumburg, Illinois. This is about 45 minutes away from downtown Chicago, and is across the street from the largest shopping mall in Illinois, Woodfield Mall. The Hyatt Regency Schaumburg overall was an excellent location for a small convention. It may not be as big as the Hyatt Regency O'Hare where other big name Chicago conventions took place in, but I felt that this location was just the right size for this con. The hallways and the ballrooms for this convention looked really nice that in some areas I thought were better than the Hyatt Regency O'Hare. The lobby at this location was very big and was a perfect place for cosplay photo shoots. It was very easy to navigate around this location. The only small issue I had with the location was the location of the con suite where you can get free ramen and rice. It was in an awkward location on the fourth floor of the Hyatt. Attendees would have to go up an elevator and enter an actual hotel room, yes, an actual hotel room because it's called a con suite, where the con suite was located. I wouldn't know that this hotel room was a con suite because the door was closed the entire time. Parking is absolutely free for this location, and there are tons of different food places to go to. One notable food place is the Pac-Man themed Level 257 restaurant in Woodfield Mall. I asked several attendees who attended this convention back in 2014 regarding the old location. The old location for Anime Apocalypse was at the Best Western Clock Tower Resort in Rockford, Illinois, approximately 55 miles northwest of Schaumburg, and based on what they all said to me, it was unanimous that they prefer this new location over the old location in Rockford. The organization for this convention was slightly above average at best. I had no issues at all with registration. I was able to get my badge immediately when I walked into registration, and there weren't as many issues with late panels. I myself had very few instances where panels started late, but in the worst case, by about 5 minutes max. The staff overall handled the convention very well. I felt that they were for the most part very nice and professional. They were always on top of things at each panel and autograph session I went to. Though I would like to mention that the staff member who handled the Friday autograph line could have been a little nicer to the attendees. The biggest issue I had with the organization for this convention was the scheduling. The schedule for this convention was released at the very last minute. It was released two days prior to the convention. In addition, the schedule was not included in the main program. They probably didn't have enough time to have the schedule included into it. They were handing out the schedule for each con day on a separate sheet of paper. This already shows that the schedule was released too late. The best way to get the full schedule was to look online. The program was also missing the descriptions for the guest panels as well as the location of the con suite. And going back to the topic on the con suite, the location of the con suite was shown on a sign at the registration desk of the convention. And that's all the information that was given to you about that place. So good luck trying to find the con suite if you miss out on that sign. The program and schedule were the biggest flaw of this convention, and one major element I believe should be improved for next year. Anime Apocalypse didn't have a lot of panels and events, but that is to be expected in a small size convention. I personally thought the events they did have at the convention were all very fun and enjoyable. I specifically enjoyed going to the guest panels. The guest list in my opinion was very good for a small size con. The guests for this convention were voice actors Chuck Huber, Chris Sabat, Erica Mendez, as well as game show panel host Grego, the super awesome samurai Dan and his wife Julian, and musical guests V for Villains. Anime Apocalypse also featured, in addition to the con suite, a maid cafe, cosplay foam fighting, as well as an anime bar. When it came to the rave, I'll let you be the judge in the comments on what you thought about the rave, as I don't really go to raves, but from what I saw at this rave, I felt there wasn't a lot of energy going on at all. Most of the people just stood there with very few people actually getting into the beat of the music. Now I'm going to be very brief regarding autographs because there really isn't anything to say about it. 
You will probably get everything signed at this convention as the lines were moderately short with the option of going back in line once you get your things signed. The dealer's room hands down was one of the con's greatest strengths. It was a very big dealer's room for a small size convention. There was a huge selection of things to buy for any anime fan, especially if you like collecting figures. I myself spent an extended period of time at the dealer's room browsing through everything it offers. Almost everything you can ask for can be found at this dealer's room. The artist alley was located in the hallway. It may not have that big of a selection as the dealer's room, but it overall gets the job done. And also, if you wanted to meet Chuck Huber and get autographs and pictures from him, he had his own booth in this hallway. Another big strength about this convention was the game room. Like the dealer's room, it was also very big for a con this size. There was a lot of variety to be found in this game room. They had console gaming, PC gaming, as well as arcade gaming. They had everything from retro gaming to modern gaming. If you are a huge fan of gaming, this is a huge must-see at this convention. One of my favorite parts of the game room was the use of CRT TVs for the retro systems. It really gave the game room that old school feel. There were several different tournaments taking place in the game room. I played tons of Super Smash Bros. for Wii U while waiting for panels, and I don't know why, but nobody likes it when I play as Robin. Overall, I had a very good experience at Anime Apocalypse 2016. I felt that this new location in Schaumburg has potential room for this con to grow. With a location closer to Chicago than ever, it will for sure attract more potential attendees in the future. The real flaws with this convention to me all pointed to the scheduling and programming. I would say for next year, the final schedule for this convention should be released at least one week in advance prior to the convention. But in their defense, this was their very first year at this new location and they probably didn't know what to expect. I'm very confident that this can be easily improved for next year. And please, don't put the con suite in such a weird location. I was starving to death when I was trying to look for this place. Other than that, what I thought were the biggest strengths of this convention were the large dealer's room and game room as well as a really solid guest list. If you are a big fan of anime, live out very close to Chicago, and you happen to have 35 bucks in your pocket, then look no further to Anime Apocalypse 2016. On a scale of 1 to 5, I give Anime Apocalypse 2016 a 3.5 out of 5. So what were your thoughts on Anime Apocalypse 2016? Did you have a good time at this convention? Would you consider going to Anime Apocalypse in the future? Please let me know in the comments, and if you like this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more convention adventure videos. So until then, this is Justin, thank you for watching.